Now we are going to be joined um, via live stream by our senator, our U.S. Senator, Bob Casey. Uh, Bob Casey fights every day for Pennsylvania families, and I think all of us in this room know that. He's a strong advocate for the policies that improve health care and early learning of children and policies that will raise wages for the middle class. Senator Casey serves on four committees, including the Senate Finance Committee, Senate Help Committee, and the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. He is also the chairman of the Special Committee on Aging, where his agenda is focused on policies that support seniors and individuals with disabilities. Senator Casey and his wife, Teresa, live in Scranton and have four adult daughters. So with no, no further ado, and I can see him in front of me, if we can get him on the big screens, let's give a warm welcome to our Senator, Senator Bob Casey. Thank you very much. Well, Angela, thanks so much for your introduction, and I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, but we're voting this week in Washington, so I've got an obligation to stay here and vote. But Angela, I want to thank you for your leadership of the men and women of labor all across our Commonwealth, the work that you do, and Maurice and your whole team uh, to lead the AFL-CIO in a critical period in our history, but especially a critical election year. And I'm just going to get right to it because this is an election year and I'm on the ballot, so I've got some things to say. But I wanted to start with one word, gratitude. I wanna thank the AFL-CIO for your help for me and your support for me over many years, both as a candidate and as a public official. I would not be able to win any election, nor would I be able to then serve the people of our state without the support of the men and women of labor and the support the AFL-CIO and the individual unions have given me uh, over all these years. And I'm gonna need your help again, as you know, and I'm grateful to have so much support as we begin uh, the, the, the six months leading up to uh, election day. This is a critical period in our history, but I think it's important to affirm and to recognize how important uh, workers are, not simply to winning elections, but to making our country run every day. The dignity of your work, the value of your work. We would not have the strongest economy in the world and the strongest national security in the world without the men and women of organized labor. And we would not have an American middle class without organized labor. We know that. And we just gotta make sure that unions are protected and that we provide opportunities for unions to grow. And one of the issues we're gonna be talking about is that very fundamental right, the right to organize a union. But I don't think I have to explain to anyone on this, in this assemblage today about what is at stake in this race, in my race, in the presidential race, and in elections across the country. You can describe it in just one word, rights. Rights are on the line, like never, ever before, at least not in, in my lifetime. Uh, the rights of women and workers and the right to vote itself in democracy. All three are on the line. Just to give an example in this election, on all three issues and all three rights, I'm on one side, my opponent's on the other. Uh, he, will, he, he has supported an abortion ban, the abortion bans we're seeing all across the country, and he supports abortion bans across the country with no exceptions for rape and for incest. I voted to advance in the Senate the Women's Health Protection Act which will uh, ensure that we have, that women have the same rights that they had before Roe v. Wade was overturned. So there's no common ground on this issue. It's a basic decision voters have to make. What kind of senator do you want when it comes to women's rights? On workers' rights, the, the contrast could be starker. My opponent doesn't really support unions. He will never, ever support the Protecting the Right to Organize Act. I do, and we've got to get it passed into law to protect the right to organize. Because the same Supreme Court that took away a 49-year right that relates to women uh, would take away the right to organize a union and destroy that opportunity uh, for workers. 
Then, of course, the third right, there's no common ground either. I support the John Lewis Voting Rights Act so we can protect and enhance voting rights. My opponent does not support that legislation. He'll be another Republican vote against these rights. He'll be another Republican vote on the extreme right in our country, voting for billionaire tax cuts and cuts to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. That's just who they are as a party. Think about what they do when they have power. They try to cut taxes for wealthy people and, and, and big corporations. They try to rig both the tax code and the courts uh, against the interests of so many Americans, including women and workers. So that's the kind of vote he'll be. And so the people of our state have to make a very basic decision. Are we going to elect a, a, a member of the United States Senate who doesn't live in Pennsylvania, who's lied about where he lives, who's lied about how he grew up? He claimed when he ran in 2022 that he came from nothing. That's a lie. And he knows it's a lie. To pretend he had some Abe Lincoln story when his story was, was of a background where he had a lot of advantages, as did I when I was growing up. But why the hell would a candidate lie about where he lives and lie about how he grew up? I don't think we can trust this candidate. We certainly can't trust him to help uh, defend the rights of women and workers. Why would we trust him on anything to be on the side of workers and families that are struggling? So what you have here in, in Mr. McCormick is an out-of-state candidate supported by out-of-state billionaires. You know why he's on television right now in Pennsylvania? Because the super PAC that was started by billionaires is paying for every penny of his ads on television right now. So the billionaire class is in big for this guy. And they're coming for my head. But you know what? When they come for me, they're coming for you. And I know that every everyone who, who was in a union in Pennsylvania, every member of the AFL-CIO isn't going to take this lying down. We're going to fight and we're going to win this election. So I wanted to thank you for taking time today to... I wanted to thank you for taking time to let me uh, appear by way of video today, but we've got a big, rough, tough fight ahead of us. Every major corporate interest in the country, the most powerful corporations in the world, not just in the country, in the entire world, will be coming for my head, and they've already started. And we've got to fight very hard every day to win this race. I'm going to need your help. Every ounce of, of energy you can dedicate to helping me and to helping the president and so many others on our ticket this year is going to be critically important. Because I think in the end, this election, in Pennsylvania especially, will be decided by the votes and the, and the work of the men and women of labor. I really believe that. I think that's going to be the difference uh, in this race. So we're, we're not just going to work together for the next six months, as important as that is. We're going to come together in the next six months and continue to work together. And then on Election Day, we're going to win together. Thanks very much, everybody. Appreciate your help.